fantastic year. Season one was a big one for him. He's got ninth place in two invitationals. Duke, well, his median finish in the invitationals is basically yeah. tenth place. It's unbelievable. Talking to Kent Ketter, remember, he doesn't have that victory yet. He had an elimination match in round four, uh, then lost, won that one, dodged elimination, lost round five, then had won another elimination match in round six. I said, how does this feel? Are you going to get, this is your third chance to get eliminated today. I was like, how are you dealing with this? And Kent said, you know, you know about these opens I play where I always just make barely make the top eight. It's like, so I've just been on the bubble today. Well, well, this is my home. I'm used to this. <laughs> it's a force of will. We're moving Jace the Mind Sculptor on Careful Study. Careful Study, a very important card for this deck. Draw two, discard, reanimation spell. Also get deep in your deck to find a reanimation spell. And Kent is going to fight over this. So he's going to use Force of Will, removing Brainstormers off his Careful Study. So two cards coming here for Ketter. Two will go into the graveyard in just a moment. And Reanimator is one of those decks where sparks fly immediately. And we can see that Ketter discarding Gemstone Caverns and Gristlebrand. He's trying to get the kill before Reed even has time to set up shop. Not the first time players have had to read this one. Probably won't be the last either. Gemstone Caverns, a wacky land. If it's in your opening hand and you are not playing first, so you're on the draw, you may begin the game with it in play. You have to remove a card to cast it. Then they can tap for colorless if, if it has a if it doesn't have a luck counter in any color if it does. So it's really strange legendary land, but it's one that lets you steal the playback. Yeah, I think that's the way you think about it, is that if you have this card in your hand and you're on the draw, you can steal the play from your opponent. That's what the card more or less does. Ketter is making his move reanimate targeting Gristlebrand. You saw Duke last turn play a Volcanic Island and a copy of Sensei's Divining Top. Looks like he may have to try to draw a card with the top here to work his way into Force of Will. Yeah, and you see the reanimator hand here so fast that he's he's trying to never let even Reed set up something like Divining Top. And Reed, you know, plays Divining Top, coast is clear, Kent's going to make Gristle Brand. 7-7 seven, seven is in play. We'll see if Ketter wants to draw cards now or later. Now, again, when you're playing its Miracles, you're always wary of a card like Caracas. Some versions of the deck play two. But you take a look at Duke's mana base. Five islands, two mount, two planes, one mountain, a bunch of non-basics and fetch lands. You're not going to find a Caracas in here. For once, I can some versions of this deck play two. If he had Caracas, that could have been an out for Reed. He could have dropped one on turn one, maybe waited a turn on making Divining Top. But there aren't that many ways that Miracles really can interact with a draw as fast as this. Force of Will is one of the best ones. Reed had one, but it just wasn't enough right now. Yeah, a lot of the time you see players go after the discard outlet from Reanimator instead of the reanimation spells because they have so many reanimation spells. They have reanimate, they have animate dead, they have exhume in varying numbers, so it's difficult to actually go after that. So the goal is to stop the way to get it into the graveyard, be it in tomb, be it careful study, and sometimes the thought sees targeting themselves. We try to do that with careful study by force of willing that, but Ketter fought back. Now he's got a gristle brand in play, and though he is at four. You have to imagine he feels pretty good about his position right now. Yeah, well, I mean, he put himself there when he decided to draw 14. And you see, Reed's going to try to get this Gristlebrand off the table, but if Kent has done well with his draws, he should have enough counter magic to never let something happen to this guy. Reed's going to play a source of plowshares. You see Kent does have a copy of Force of Will. And a ponder over there as well. We'll see what card he does want to discard. Excuse me, exile to Force of Will, and it will be careful study. So Ketter's going to go down to three. The careful study he placed in his graveyard will have to go to the exile zone. That one's not going to be over there, so we will get that corrected here in just a moment. And the path for Reed to win this game is very difficult. He has to just continue to throw cards like Swords to Plowshares at Gristlebrand and hope that Kent runs out of Force of Wills. Now the difficulty, every time Kent gets to hit him with the Gristlebrand, that's seven more cards that Kent gets to draw and that much more of a chance that Kent has something like Days or Force of Will to take care of the uh, Swords to Plowshares. Now, how did Kent's life total get this low? Well, he reanimated Gristlebrand, that'll do you some, and then he activated Gristlebrand once to draw seven cards. You throw a couple of copies of Force of Will and Fetch Lands in there and he's already down to two. Doesn't take much, though. His life total will get a little bit higher here. You have to imagine in just a moment, as he does sacrifice Bloodstained Mire, we'll search up an underground sea, and perhaps we'll see an Entomb here in just a moment. The other thing Kent wants to do with these draws is he wants to set up an insurance policy for himself. If he can use cards like Entomb and just simply set up another combo, you know, a this time preferably something like Animate Dead plus Gristlebrand, then even if Reed does manage to take care of Gristlebrand, Kent's probably fine. He'll just make another one. Kent's going to search up a Sire and Sandy within two. Now, this is what makes things a little bit interesting here is, yes, you can get Sire and Sandy, and yes, you can make Reed discard his entire hand. Those are plays that are available, but things get a little interesting when Sensei's Divine Top plus Terminus is out there. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if both players discarding their hand is that great for Kent, actually, on this board. Um, Kent needs would like the ability to hold up counter spells in case Reed tries to kill his Crystal Brand. Miracles is actually a deck that can func play off the top of its deck and, and did not its hand very well. Especially when it has in top and play. Ketter's going to go up to nine. He'll play a Ponder. So it's time to take a look at a couple of cards here. Animate Dead among them. He's going to keep Animate Dead. That's his draw. Ponder's done resolving. There's a land. This is Animate Dead. And again, this is very, very risky. If Reed has kept a Terminus on top of his deck, this is not going to go well at all for Kent. Now, Kent will be discarding a couple of cards here, Days and Brainstorm among them, but, you know, the, the plan here, right, is just make him discard his hand, see if he has a Terminus, and if that's not the case, as he does discard one of them, Reed's dead next turn. Now, to be fair, even if Reed does have the Terminus, Kent gets to draw seven yeah. off Grisselbrand, and because the Sire will be gone, Kent will get to keep all seven cards. So, in that sense, things are okay for Reed. Or rather, for Kent. Still, if Reed is able to somehow... This does give Reed some options. He draws for the turn. Well, the option's not Terminus. We know that. Ketter's trying to hold on here. You can see he is worried. Maybe it is Terminus. I think it is. That's a sword. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, go swords at Gristlebrand. And this is a great situation. This is why the Sire of Insanity is risky. It's not... This is a decent situation for Reed. Kent can't actually... It's not great for him to draw seven here. Yeah. He has to decide what he wants to do. He can either gain... Just let himself gain a lot of life. He can draw seven and hope to hit a Force of Will. Even a daze here would actually be okay. All right, he's going to go to two. It's it's almost like a free roll, right, where he can just say, okay, I'll draw seven. Hopefully I'll run myself in a Force Will plus blue card. If I don't, okay, well, I get seven cards back. But he is also... He gets seven life back, but he's also discarding seven cards. Right. So it's good and bad. Yeah. Even even drawing a daze, which is tapping Reed's mana, is probably worthwhile. Yeah. You see there, Kent goes back up to nine, as you said, off the swords to plowshares. Siren Sandy trigger. Kendall has to discard all these cards. Reed wants to take a look at Untied Spire Tyrant, another copy of Gristlebrand and Animate Dead among them. Keep in mind there's an Exhum as well. That's one less reanimation spell as Ketter will draw a card. Didn't get a great look at what he found. So he'll just attack for six. He's going to put Duke down to five. Trigger, discard. Reed playing this one so well. It's a tough situation for him, but he still has a chance, and that's the great, the best part here. Now, actually... And this is a misstep on my end, so I do apologize. Animate Dead gives the creature minus one, minus zero. So Reed was at 11. So he goes down, not down to five in a two-turn clock, but down to six. So it's actually a three-turn clock. And that's a big deal because that's just additional draw steps for Reed to find source of plowshares or terminus. So that exchange is actually huge here. Yep, discard Firestorm, pass the turn back. Reed's going to spin the top. And all it takes is a source to plowshares, and suddenly Reed is the favorite to win this game. It seems so ridiculous. Perhaps Ketter was supposed to go for a card. He doesn't have Iona in it. Yeah, he doesn't have Iona in his main deck. He has Elish Norn, could have found Tidespire Tyrant, could have found Sinks of the Steel Wind. Well, what I'm wondering is when, when he entombs, if he just entombs another Gristlebrand and holds on to Animate Dead, then that turn when Reed, say Reed starts Swords to plowshares in Kent's creatures. He just keeps making more Gristlebrands. Or, yeah, maybe if they... This It's typically, I think, a spot where you might want to get a card like Iona. Iona name on white would actually be a... Probably, that would be a game-ending play for Kent. But they don't have the copy of Iona in their main deck. Yeah, it's hiding out in the sideboard, so that's not going to be an option for them in this particular game. So, Siren Sandy is the plan, and it's been a pretty good plan in the history of Reanimator. Although Animate Dead giving it minus one, minus zero right now does kind of hurt, giving Duke the ability to spin top a bunch. Yeah, now the good news is that normally if Reed found a fetch land here, he would crack it and see three cards on the next turn, but he doesn't actually have the one life point to give up. He's going to give it up now, so he's going to take the chance with Aaron Mesa. He's going down to five. Well, I think he has to, really. This sees three new cards, whereas the another line of just drawing the card and saying go only sees one new card. This does seem right for Reed. This gives him another chance at Source of Plowshares. gives him another chance at Terminus. That's all he can really ask for. It's going to give his deck a healthy shuffle 
and hope the top three cards do cooperate. Well, Reach is doing a great job of playing to his outs here. Um, knows that he, he really needs to find a Terminus or a Swords to Plowshares and if he wants to get the game. I mean, take a look at Reed's deck list, though. Copies of Terminus in his main deck? Two. Cop Reed was definitely metaing for different decks this weekend. He'll spin the top. Copies of Swords of Plowshares, well, there are four of those, so he is drawing very slim right now. He'll set things back on top, pass the turn back over to Ketter. Ketter will draw. It's time to attack. Is it good to go? Draw. All right. <laughs> make, <laughs> make making him sweat it. Make you sweat yeah. it out just a little bit there, Will Reed. Kent Cutter's going to win game number one here over Reed Duke. Reanimator up a game over Miracles as we take a look at the sideboards. And we mentioned it right at the top. Reed doesn't have a card that you would expect in the sideboard of this deck. And rest in peace, probably in part because he's playing Dig Through Time. Right. Well, some interesting choices. So Reed said he didn't want to play fair in his Tom Ross matchup. And we mentioned this last time that Reed was on camera, but he put in a two Peacekeepers in his sideboard to be great against Infect. But it just so happens, actually, that that card can be decent against Reanimator as well. Uh, so I actually would not be surprised if he were to bring that card in. Uh, outside of that, a lot of the usual suspects, the cards that you want in the main against Reanimator, have been moved to the sideboard. So his copies of cards like Spell Pierce, those are in the board. Uh, the third Terminus is in the board. Two Vendillion Click are in the board. All of those, one of his Force of Wills actually also moved, was in the sideboard. I'd expect to see a lot of those players come into the main deck for the, for the games two and three. For Ketter's side of thing, with again, him and Lissette with this unusual build of Reanimator, two Pithing Needle, a Ratchet Bomb, four copies of Abrupt Decay in the board, a Coffin Purge, Niona, three Thoughtseize, two Bayou, and then a Tropical Island. So they're able to board in lands and board out Gemstone Caverns if they'd like to. Of course, these. Green producing lands in Bayou and Tropical Island help you cast Abrupt Decay, a card that I expect to see come in even though Reed doesn't have Rest in Peace. Kent may not know that, so that's the first thing. So having Abrupt Decay to hedge against that card is nice, but also, you know, killing Counterbalance can be really, really nice in this matchup. So that's another option there. So I expect to see Decays come in. Wouldn't be surprised to see Needle come in and take care of Sensei's Divine Top or Caracas. And then, you know, maybe Iona comes in, maybe the Thoughts Seasons come in. The thing here is that you don't want to over sideboard and dilute your deck too much. Yeah, and I think the fact that Reed's on an unorthodox build of Miracles is... It'll be interesting to see how Kent sideboards. As you mentioned, you'd say Kent can board in Pithing Needles for the Caracas and Abrupt Decays for the Rest in Peace, but Reed actually doesn't play either of those cards. So Kent may make his deck worse on sideboarding if he doesn't know exactly what Reed's on. But it wouldn't, you know, it would stand to reason that there's a lot of cards that he would expect out of Reed that would be good here. Well, while we do wait for these players to finish sideboarding up as Kent Ketter is up a game, we will talk about our chat and how it's back and how everyone can join the feature match area. So, SCG, this is something which has not been around for a while, but if you watch us on Twitch.tv, uh, we now do have SCG live chat, so you can talk along as you watch the commentary. Uh, for all people, you have slow-mo to free chat, which means you get a message every every couple of minutes or so. Now, if you are in subscriber only, so that means you can chat during subscriber only mode. Also, you get some excellent emoticons and badges to go with your name, pictures like Cedric Phillips or myself. Yeah, or Patrick Sullivan always very pleased, as you guys will see here in just a moment, along with our penguin wearing yeah. a jetpack. The penguin is sweet as is the slow play turtle. There are some other ones available as well. If you head over to twitch.tv slash SCG Live, where I imagine most of you are at this point, you notice the chat is back up and running. You also see the list of emoticons as well. We'll be adding more of those and to subscribe it's only $4.99 a month so feel free to join the feature match area today as it will be available on SCG Live for you guys for coverage for the foreseeable future but hey be responsible out there all right be responsible that's all we ask this is typically what I feel is a difficult matchup for Mir for Reanimator, actually, excuse me. When I played Reanimator at Grand Prix Washington, D.C., I had Ren and Miracles and Esper Stoneblade a couple of times, and just the fact that they had access to Caracas and Rest in Peace or whatever graveyard hit they wanted to have, you know, this is a time when people were playing Surgical Extraction, too. It always felt really tough, but you just take a look at Reed's particular deck list for this tournament, and I feel Kent is very fortunate given the composition of the deck. When you look at the main deck, I certainly agree with you. Cards like... Dig Through Time, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, these have all been main decked by Reed. Those are cards that Kent really doesn't have to worry about. But you're right, this is normally a tougher matchup. Miracles is a deck that's full of counter spells, and 
Whereas some combo decks, say your storm decks, get to ignore things like swords to plowshares, uh, those cards are actually very good against Reanimator. So there aren't, you ha don't make too many dead cards in the Miracles deck when you play Reanimator, which I think is why it tends to be a hard matchup. But because Reed was boarded against the fair decks, Kent got the game one advantage of Reed having dead cards, and I think that's what got him game one. Uh, with any control versus combo matchup, things do get more difficult post board, though. And we'll see what Ketter can put together here. And for Duke, back against the wall right now. Ketter already has eliminated a couple players from the event. We saw on camera him against Jeff Hoagland this morning. Trying to do a pretty big one, though. Trying to be the guy who knocks Reed Duke out of the tournament. Yeah, he's going to take a mulligan very quickly here. We'll see if maybe a Gemstone Caverns does show up here, assuming that he does still have them in the deck. Well, if you had four Gemstone Caverns in your deck and you knew you were going to be on the draw, that's, got, that's real hard to take them out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is so many Gemstone Caverns. That's, that is such a bold deck-building decision by Kent and Joe. You can exile one for the other Gemstone Caverns, and then, then you're great. We saw Joe do it, and then die on turn one. So <laughs> he did have the opportunity to do that against Logan Mize, and then he died. Not a, not a bad start to the game. Stealing the draw is good, but it doesn't actually win you the game. Yeah. It's funny, Logan Mize, who has been eliminated from the tournament, he played against Ketter first, and then was eliminated by Lissette. Played against the same deck, and had he beaten Lissette to stay alive, he would have to play against Reanimator again in the hands of Chris Reanimator, so he could not get away from Gristlebrand and reanimate the legacy portion with Omnitel. And it just seems like a very difficult matchup for Omnitel. It's not great for the deck. You see here, Kent mulling, mulling to six, but yeah, he does have the Gemstone Caverns in his opener. Yeah, now the question is, what card is he going to remove? Well, by being on a mulligan and by using Gemstone Caverns, Kent's going to actually start the game on a four-card hand, so he needs to make these four cards count. Man, you, just, <laughs> you can tell he's... All right, I, I want the land in play. It taps for all the colors of mana, so that's a good start. Not entirely sure to discard. He's got thoughts he's at the front of his hand. He has a Force Will in his hand, too. Kent is one of the more animated players when it comes to the SEG circuit. Uh, that's why we love there. watching him. Yeah, oh, it's great. He's there. You can just tell. He's like, man, I, I have nothing I want to discard. Man, he's going to exile something to put a luck counter on there. There's a volcanic counter, just a passing of the turn. Man, he exiled Brainstorm of all cards. <laughs> Jeez. That's a pretty good card. We'll see what, what it is he kept. Maybe just going for the he's going for the really fast kill. Gonna be actually Thoughtseize. The question is, who's he targeting? And I think that's really interesting. He could be targeting himself, or he could be targeting Reed. It's gonna be a spell piece, spell pierce either way. You see, Kent's hand looks like Careful Study, Force of Will, and Animate Dead. And Animate Dead. So, yeah, he is not too far away from having a combo put together, and has already gotten one of the counter spells out of Reed's hand. That cavern is so interesting in this deck. Because, I mean, look what it's allowing him to do right now. This is, in theory, his first turn of the game. It's just letting him kind of get to work here. Well, he's forcing Reed to have a counter spell on each turn, starting on turn one. Now, normally when the Miracles deck is on the play, turn one is when they get to spend their mana to make Sensei's Divining Top and not have to worry about losing. But Kent has taken that safety away from him. Careful study going to be cast here. Ketter picked up a reanimate and a mystery card. It's an exhume to go along with it. So the question now is, what is he going to discard? And part of the reason I think Kent is casting Careful Study now is, one, he, you know, maybe he's just trying to get a little lucky and backdoor into your animation threat. But two, I think you want to get these spells out of your hand as fast as you can because if Counterbalance comes into play, you might not ever get a chance. Yeah, he's going to discard two. He found a little too much of a good thing. He has one of each re <laughs> reanimate guard. He has a reanimate and exhume and animate dead and a force of will. So rather than keep the force of will, it looks like he's just going to keep reanimate and exhume. So hoping that if he somehow gets a creature in the graveyard, he'll have lots of chances to reanimate it. Flutter strand the draw here for Duke. There's an island, just a passing of the turn. Ketter will draw. Ideally, he'd like to find a card like Entomb. He needs to find both a creature and a way to get it in the yard. Uh, what he was not looking for was a copy of Gemstone Caverns. That's what he drew. Here's an island for Duke. Duke doesn't have white mana just yet. Ketter will draw a card. 
He'll just pass the turn. So a little draw go action here. You have to imagine this does favor Reed at this point. Absolutely. There's no pressure on Reed right now. Um, he'd love to find a card like Divining Top or some way to gain advantage during these turns. But even by making land drops, Reed pulls ahead. You see he's sitting on a copy of Red Elemental Blast at the ready if Kent does try to cantrip into something. Let's see if Duke wants to make a move here. Maybe a brainstorm. A little end of turn action. He's certainly giving it some thought right now. Yeah, he... Right now, he doesn't... I can't imagine he feels too much pressure from Kent's deck, so he's inclined to just continue to draw cards. But, yeah, eventually he is going to want to make a move of some sort. Land number five's in play. I see the Arid Mason and the Flood of Strand as far as fetches are concerned, in case Reed ever works his way into a Brainstorm or a top. Two islands and a Volcanic Island. And now here's a Ponder from Ketter. So we'll see if Duke would like to do anything about this. You have to imagine Kent has a pretty weak hand. Yeah, well, there's two ways Reed can play it. He can either Red Elemental Blast the first cantrip he sees out of Kent, or he can actually just save that for a counter war and let Kent have all the can have a lot of cantrips and just win on the turn when it matters. Reed's going to take a third option, though. He's going to let the Ponder resolve, but in response, he's going to go ahead and cast Vendillion Click. Yeah, with Ponder still being on the stack, we'll see exactly what will happen here, because I think Reed wants to get a better look at what... He's up against. You see the two exhumes and abrupt decay reanimate in the gemstone caverns. Then he can decide if he'd like to counter it or not. You're right. He's actually still on the stack. Yeah. Uh, of note, gemstone caverns does make any color because Kent put it into play uh, on turn zero. So the abrupt decay in Kent's hand is live right now. It looks like it's headed to the bottom of the deck. So a mystery card coming here. And now Reed is going to sacrifice Arid Mesa. Wouldn't be surprised to see him dig up. A source of mana that taps for a red. And there's a plateau. I don't see that one a lot in Miracles. But Reed no. has one. Yep. And again, I think this is a, a prime target for Red Blast, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And him putting the plateau in Miracles is really a sign that, you know, there just isn't that much wasteland going around right now. You can play, you can afford to play some extra dual lands, making your mana better. You won't be punished too much. Ketter's turn is over. We go back Duke's way. Now Duke has a clock. That's a good start. Looks like he has a land to play, too. Though he's deciding if he does want to play it or not, or perhaps save it in his hand for something like a brainstorm. He'll start by attacking for three. Ketter's going to go down to 16. One thing is that Reed actually has a copy of Counterbalance in his hand, and he knows Ketter has boarded in Abrupt Decays, and something that Reed, I think, has done here is he doesn't really have a top or way to abuse the Counterbalance yet, so he's just leading out with something like Vendillion Click, hoping that it might get an abrupt decay instead of the counterbalance. Yeah, I think of the two cards, counterbalance the more important one in the matchup. And of course, did put a counterbalance just on the bottom of the deck, so he doesn't know how many are out there. But I do agree that maybe having a Vendillion Click be the bait is a nice line of play. Now here's a Jace the Mind Sculptor, and then here's a card that can run away with things. Yeah, and something that cannot be, be abrupt decayed. Reed going to sacrifice a couple of fetch lands right now. So two copies of Tundra are going to come in. And we might see a little counterbalance plus brainstorm from Jace to put some ones and twos back on top of the deck. Yeah, Reed does not actually have that much counter magic. But what he's done here is he set up a sequence where he looked at Ken's hand with Vendillion Click, countered Ken's can trip, um... And now, he, now that he knows Ken's hand, he's able to set up a really good counterbalance because he knows all the mana costs in Ken's hand. So just getting all that incremental in information really is going to help him just on this turn. Well, it's a brainstorm from Chase. Two cards left to go back here for Duke. Well, so he wants to set it up. Yeah. So, yep, Jace and Brainstorm, he still does have the counterbalance. Finds a seventh land in here. At a certain point, he'll just start hard casting these Force of Wills. He has the mana to do it. Yeah, plenty of mana at this point. 
There's Counterbalance. You have to imagine he's happy at the top of his deck. He could have gone Fate Sealing towards Counter, but he elected not to. So he's definitely got a big plan in mind, and it looks like it's sculpted perfectly here for Reed. We're going to go back Kent's way. Well, this is really Kent's last hurrah to do something with the game here. Once he untaps, Reed will have Counterbalance, multiple copies of Force of Will, which is a hard counter here, Jace, and a win condition. I, that's enough pressure that I don't see Kent pulling out from under it. And Jace is going to brainstorm. Three cards coming, two will come back. You see a Flood Strand among the cards. And the big issue here, right, is even if Kent is able to put something into play, we can just say, well, pick it up. That's what Jace is here for. He'll come across for three. Yep, Kent down to 13. Five more turns. It doesn't even have something like a Inkwell Leviathan to get back. The creatures against Sphinx of the Steel when it tides about Tyrant, a Sire of Insanity. Ellis Norn, of course, four copies of Gristlebrand. Here's a dig through time from Reed. This is the card that's been the most impressive one for Miracles so far to me. Yeah, Reed just tightening the noose here. Already has Kent covered with a couple counter spells, just wants to find some more. He needs to make sure that Kent can't do anything for the next four turns, and the way Reed does that is through card advantage and a lot of it. It is very telling, the way that Reed has constructed his deck, and we've talked about it a couple of times. Just, it seems like he's so much more geared towards beating Stoneblade decks this weekend, which, to be fair, a lot of players who are here do play those decks in the Invitationals, but that deck is basically non-existent this weekend. I don't believe any of the eight players we've seen in Legacy today have been playing a, have played a Stoneblade variant. Nope. Now, tomorrow, to be fair, Brian Bronduin, one of the players who went straight to Day 2, is known for playing Stoneblade in Legacy, so there may be at least one player on it. Yep. But certainly not the number that I that Reed would have imagined. And Brian, of course, winning Grand Prix New Jersey with Jeskai Stoneblade. So it wouldn't surprise you one bit to see him battling with that tomorrow. Jace is going to go brainstorming yet again. Reed with no interest in fate sealing. Just wants to keep looking at cards, keep basically stacking his hand. We'll play a Tundra. There's a Sensei's Divine Top. Now here is the super hard lock. Well, it's top counterbalance, a win con, a Jace, and a seven card hand. That's. That's not where you want to be against Miracles. Probably not. <laughs> that that is, is a little he probably card. has answers to everything. <laughs> He'll be discarding a Gristle Brand. He's finally found a way to put a big creature in the bin. And that was actually the plan from Ken. It's why he wasn't playing any of his lands earlier on, as he was trying to, There was a possibility that he'd have to just build up to an eight card hand. Are you going to go brainstorming again? He can set up things how he'd like them. Now, in there, we did get a chance to see the copy of Peacekeeper. Reed has brought it in. I have to imagine he'll try to keep that one hidden for game three. Prefer not to show the Peacekeeper. Yeah. Kent has brought it in abrupt decay, so Kent does have answers to it. But Reed is now putting a good mix of mana costs on top of his deck with Jace. And with nine mana sources in play, just seems unlikely. Kent can play Gemstone Caverns, but he needs to note that that is a legendary land. Kent... Is <laughs> beat. He's beat anyway at this point, so he says, you know what? Not going to bin that one. Nope, that one's not going to matter too much. I will concede the game. So Reed Duke is going to win game number two here over Kent Ketter. <laughs> you see Kent shake his head a little bit. But he's got to gear up for one more game here, as if he does win it, he'll be playing tomorrow. Yeah, huge game for both players. Um, we saw Reed Duke on camera earlier this round still getting hit by... Tom Ross, yet again, that's where he picked up his loss in Legacy, but battling back, and with a win here, he will make day two. A lot of players getting ready for day two right now. Of course, we had our four players make it through early this morning. Brad Nelson, Brian Brondowin, Gerard Fabiano, and Ross Merriam. They are already through. Joining them in the afternoon, we have Tom, Tom Ross. Wait a bounce, man, what a bounce back. Yeah, Tom Ross starting off the day slow and just tearing it up now into day two. So Tom Ross in, Stephen Mann, Joe Lissette, and who will be the eighth player? Yeah, one of these two. That's for sure. Kent Ketter, Reed Duke. They're going to change around their sideboard just a little bit here. Been a good turn for both of them. Kent been flying under the radar a little bit. Reed's had his back against the wall in elimination rounds, but he's bounced back as well. Only one can come through, though. Maybe the Miracles or Reanimator. Tough to bet against Reed. I mean, when we said it before, just the beginning of the tournament, uh, based on 
experience and play skill alone. Reed came into the tournament as the favorite. Now, he didn't have a dominant day, but even Reed's off days are can be good enough to make day two, and we may see that here. And if you fight forward in tournament, and if once you make it to day two, then it's a clean slate. Eight players, all with an equal shot of making it to the finals. Yeah. Just making it through different portions of the tournament. Some were able to do it, some weren't. And tomorrow's where things get super, super interesting. Though, to be fair, it's been super interesting all day. And talking with all the players, just the intensity of the matches. All the games have been really close. A lot of fun to watch. Tom Ross tweeting about it, saying that this was the most intense tournament he's ever played in. There's a lot of money on the line every single match. It's been a blast to watch. And one of these players, well, they'll walk away with a, a nice chunk of money. So nothing to complain about there, but there's a lot more on the line tomorrow if they're able to make it there. Just watched Man Animator Mirror last round, too. You saw Joe Lissette sneak by Chris Van Meter. Yeah, absolutely. Though in the Reanimator Mirror, Kent's teammate Joe Lissette winning another elimination match. He's just had his back to the wall all day, but I, never, never out. I love the bold choice here by Lissette and Ketter playing Reanimator this weekend. And not just Reanimator. Mind you, just an off-the-wall, absolutely crazy <laughs> build that Joe has been working on for a while that he's been waiting to figure out what's the best time to pull the trigger. And he's elected for this tournament. And Kent is someone who, when we see him at the Invitationals, we, all, oh, we, see, him, we always see him, excuse me, play Delver decks, be it Sultai, be a team, or what have you. And now he's decided, I'm going to put those down, and I'm going to play Reanimator this weekend with, yeah, four Gemstone Caverns. Let's do this. It's, it's really bold. The turn yeah. of the year. Gemstone Cavern, one of those cards that really high variance. We saw actually Kent did have the Gemstone Caverns on the draw game too. But I think between Gemstone Caverns and his mulligan, he was just a few cards short. He kept it. Reanimator has to keep a lot of speculative hands, things that are missing maybe one type of card. Um, and he did have that. Wasn't really able to put his pieces together, reassemble the lock, and then it was over. Well, it's time to take a look at the opening hand here for both players. Ketter will be on the play. I don't think he chose to draw with his gemstone caverns. I imagine he no, chose to play. No way. It's the, the last game of the day. <laughs> He's going to take a mulligan. See if Reed keeps his seven. He's giving him a long look. And no Krakus, no rest in peace. None of the cards that you would think of. None of the trumps. Reed can't play a hate card and hide behind it. He has to win each game the manual way of just countering each spell, slowly assembling card advantage, and getting a lockdown. But he doesn't, you're right, he just doesn't have any card that he can just slam and say, hey, I got you now. Well, let's see if Ketter can find a better six. Pithy Needle among them, Force of Will too. Gristlebrand over there, it looks a little all over the place. Things came together so well for Kent in game one. Game two, they certainly did not, and this is looking tough too. Yeah, Force of Will, Gristlebrand, Pithy Needle, lands. He does, he does have an Entomb, that's a big deal. Starting off with the Needle's pretty nice too. You have to imagine Sensei's Divine Top, but we will get confirmation on what that is naming. But once again, Kent's hand, it's a puzzle that's missing a couple pieces. He needs, he doesn't have any reanimation spell right now. And he not, he does have a way to get a creature into the yard, so he's halfway there. But he doesn't have a reanimation spell, and he's not really well suited to win a counter war either. And we'll name Sensei's Divine Top, and Reed says, I'll play one anyway. <laughs> All right. Not scared of you. Kind of will draw a copy of reanimate. And that was pretty big here. Now... Kent is going to have to choose whether or not he wants to try to fire off an early reanimate or whether he wants to wait to have a blue card for that force of will. If he chooses to wait, he can't wait too long on it. Well, now it's time to cast an Entomb. A little read counter. Well, he's going to think about it. I'm interested that Kent went for the end step on Tomb. It did give Reed the chance to fight a counter war over it. Reed now has enough untapped mana, could play a card like Spell Pierce. Or, or actual counter spell. 
Or, yeah, there, he has more options to fight here. Waiting may have been a mistake. This is interesting. I see Reed taking a look at the grip. That's going to resolve. And you can't imagine... Well, I guess if Reed kept a hand without too much counter magic, it must have been because he was really banking on Divining Top to do a lot, plus fetch lands to do a lot of work for him. It may have been that that turn one pithing needle from Kent Ketter really just put, screwed up Reed's game plan. Yeah. Leaving Reed at the mercy of his top decks. Maybe Kent has found a hole in the armor. We'll see. Is it a blue card? I believe it was. Nope, polluted delta. Well, he can't pitch the force of, to the force of will. He can, however, pay for a spell pierce. So if he thinks that Reed has a spell pierce, he could go for it here, but he's not going to take the risk. Do you like waiting? I don't know. I'm not sure how much better it gets. I'm going to trust Kent on it here. That's an exhume. So it's not a blue card, but it's a redundant... It's a redundant reanimation effect, so I think you can go for it at least now. So yeah. here's reanimate with the ability to play around spell pierce targeting Gristlebrand. I agree. I... I do think you go for the reanimate here, especially once you've drawn Exhum. Reed going to sacrifice. I flooded Strand. Tundra is what I'll search for. So he's down to 19. And we'll see what kind of response Duke does have to this. Looks like it's just counter spell that he wants to get right now. Yep. So yeah. actual counterspell showing up to the party. Now this is where things get really, really right. interesting. Right. Now does Kent play the second one immediately? Yeah. And my guess is yes. Oh, man, this is... Yeah. Uh, he's going to sacrifice full fetch. Yeah. All right, he's making he's his move. I think you have to here because... You need to force Reed to have counterspell plus spell pierce. If Reed just has counterspell plus counterspell then by waiting a turn, you're giving him a ton of game here. Even if Reed wins this counter war, if this card gets countered, it's not that bad for Kent. He has a lot of cards that get a creature out of the graveyard. He has a forcible in hand. He could rebuild from here. Then again, if Reed doesn't have the counter spell, Kent might win with this play. Just Exhum and Force of Will remain in the hand. Maybe a third one hiding. We'll see. I think, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, he's going for it. I don't think he's activating fetch lands not to, so here is Exhum. Oh, my. And there you go. <laughs> the crack of the fetch land is off. Well, this one's not going to be working. Well, I don't know if it's going to be Pierce or a Brainstorm, but he very quickly sacrificed that fetch land, so he'll going to dig up a volcanic island. Kent's got to hope it's Brainstorm and not yeah. Spell Pierce. And Reed gets Pierce. He can't cast it fast enough. Unbelievable. What patience they're not going for the Exhum on Reed's side really makes Kent suspect that this might work, but he gets Kent to play out the last reanimation card, and now Kent's left without a lot of tools. It's so interesting. Again, was Kent supposed to wait? Was he supposed to go? Was he supposed to hope to draw a fourth land? Is he supposed to hope to draw a fourth uh, a blue card for his force of will, or is he just supposed to say, okay, you have those spell and if you don't, I win the game? What Reed did is he turned on Spell Pierce there on a board where Spell Pierce was almost a dead card. If you know, there were lots of ways that Kent could play that game, either waiting for a blue card or waiting for a fourth land that make the Spell Pierce not particularly strong. But because of how Reed played by letting in Tomb Resolve and choosing to fight the fight where he did, he managed to get both spells from Kent, and now things get good. Council's Judgment is the play from Reed. This is why he played the top into the to, into the Pithing Needle, and. He's taken Kent's car to Kent's threats. He's got a divining top. This is exactly where Miracles wants to be. Ketter's got to draw a copy of Entomb, re or excuse me, Exhum, Reanimate, Anime Dead, like right now. Because now he's just drawn the fourth land. So if he chose to try to play around Spell Pierce, he would have been able to do that. And again, it's it's so well, easy to say now, whoa, of course you wait. Well, but Reed didn't counter the Entomb. So if you're yeah. Ketter, you think, okay, he doesn't have the Spell Pierce. And you saw him counter in two, you saw him counter careful study in the first game. So you saw him fight over the cards that put them in the graveyard, but this time he just let it go. 
And now all Kent can do is draw and pass the turn. He's at the mercy of his draw steps as now Reed's going to put a clock into play, much like game number two. It's a copy of Endillion Click. <laughs> and things are going from bad to worse here for Kent. He's going to have to use his force of will on a Vendillion Click. I imagine that's not something that he wants to do, but he wants to keep a clock off of the table. If you're Reed, you're, you're likely not going to fight too hard over this force of will. With 21 minutes in the round, there's not a time concern here for Reed. Yeah, he'll just spin the top and let it get forced. And Kent, Kent knows here. He knows uh -huh. counterbalance now from Reed. You put it very well during game two. Reed is now tightening the noose. He doesn't have the win con yet, but it's getting harder and harder for Kent to think of a situation where he wins. Yeah, now it involves abrupt decay, and is this a Jace? Oh, boy. Yep. That's going to resolve. It's time for Reed to brainstorm. And no emotion from Reed. This is just business as usual. He's been doing it for years as he plays a Scalding Tarn and passes the turn back. And this is all sorts of trouble for Kent. The, the fight of this game happened on the exhum. This, yeah. is, this is the end game now. Yeah. It was turns ago, and it was so well played by Reed. And again, game one, you saw him fight over careful study. And Kent said, you want to fight over that? I'll fight over that. You force a will, I'll force a will back, because I need this to resolve to try my reanimation spells. Kent got a Gristlebrand to play, got a Siren Sandy to play. He won game one. And then this game, Reed says, OK, and Tomb's fine. I'll fight over your reanimation spells. And it worked. And it worked beautifully. And now Ketter is stuck here. Draw, go. And you can see the frustration, and it just may be slipping away here. Was he supposed to wait with Exhum? Was he supposed to wait with Reanimate? Who knows? And you see here, Kent staring into what looks like an impossible board. Jace, Sensei's Divining Top, Counterbalance, seven untapped lands. He has the Abrupt Decay. He can take care of Counterbalance, but then what? Well, he has Abrupt Decay, and he has Animate Dead. So it's not impossible. It's just really freaking hard. <laughs> he says to hope that Reed has had a bunch of really subpar draws. So he's going to start with Abrupt Decay on Counterbalance. That's going to bite the dust. Now the question is, is he going to cast Animate Dead right now? I think he has to. Can't let another brainstorm happen. And this is this is a Hail Mary right here if you're yeah. Kent. Because I mean it's this he's doing this in the face of Jace. You know, he's just Oh yeah. This is first of all, this has to resolve. And if you're Kent, I mean a force of will can be hard cast. There's a bun a spell pierce. And any of those can be in Reed's hand or in the top three cards of Reed's library. All of them will take care of it. Even if you do resolve the anime dead, it's still not game over. Uh, you're right, Reed has a Jason play. There's a lot more work to be done. Looks like Reed's going to draw a card since he's dividing top. Kent can't stop him, so top card goes on top. And treat the angels is what the Duke has found. So now what he's going to be able to do is make a bunch of angels. There are three of them. So that much is going to happen. Now the question is, does Reed have the counter spell? Here's the thing, he doesn't even need it, right? That's Possibly what, not. And he's, and, gonna, he's gonna cast Forceful or Moving Counterbalance, but the thing is, I, in this situation, Reed might not even need it. He lets Crystal Brand into play, right? It can't right. draw cards. Because Kent will die. Yeah, he'll go down to 10, and there are four angels staring back at him, so Reed can just say, okay, your, your Crystal Brand's in play, bounce and attack you. There's a right. Bloodstained Mire, and just passing the turn back. We'll Ketter over to Duke. Duke will draw. You're right, the Entreat was enough, but as it turns out, Reed just had, he had both. He yeah. had the Force of Will and the Entreat. And, well, when you, when you brainstorm that many times, but Jace doesn't really come as much of a surprise to have all the answers, as now he's going to spin the top. Forcible among those cards. And one more counterspell should just about do it. With one card in Kent's hand, he'd need a good top deck, or a great top deck, rather, to stay in the game. And with a Force of Will in Reed's hand, that great top deck won't be coming. And it looks like Reed Duke will be the last player to make it on to day two. After a shaky start, and he's had his back against the wall a couple of times. He had to get through Dylan Donegan, a player who just won our Season 4 Invitational, and now a player who had a dominant run Season 1 <laughs> as Kent is hoping for. 
who knows what. He'll show an abrupt decay and extend the hand. Reed Duke is going to win this match over Kent Ketter, and he'll make it into play tomorrow. Down a game in this match and doesn't have a lot of hate, but played very well as he oftentimes does, and the Duke is in to day two.